Welcome to Savannah, Georgia, hostess city of the South and American Paris. I'm John Duncan, Professor Emeritus at Armstrong Atlantic State University, where I taught Savannah history for 32 years. Join me on a romantic tour of the elegant city of Savannah, one of America's most historic and beautiful cities. Savannah had changed very little since the Civil War until a single book was published in 1994, John Barron's Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. It has been published in 29 foreign languages and never has a book so impacted a city. It was on the New York Times bestseller list for 216 weeks. That's four years, two months, longest run in its history. I was uh, enchanted. In fact, I was seduced by the city of Savannah. People ask me, why? How did you choose Savannah? It chose me that day. And from, that, from then on as well. I, when I went over the bridge into Savannah from South Carolina, I was overcome by the beauty of the place. Spectacular view. I've never been in a place like this. The greenery, the vegetation, surround, uh, on all sides, above, uh, you know, underfoot, wherever. And the mansions were absolutely spectacular. Uh, they were 19th, 19th century, primarily 19th century Victorian mansions and townhouses and, and little 18th century wooden dwellings. <clears throat> I was having the time of my life. I loved being there. I loved the stories. I loved the people. I loved writing about Savannah. But it's, a very, it's about a very strange circumstance. And it turned out to be widely popular. Uh, so I was delighted and totally surprised, taken by surprise. And then the movie came out. Yeah, I thought Clint Eastwood did a really a very good job with it. And I enjoyed it. And a lot of people like it very much. In the movie, John Cusack plays me. It's a bit, I'm a bit changed in it. Uh, the movie suggests that I went to Savannah to write a piece for uh, Town & Country magazine, which I'd never written for. After my book came out, and then the movie, uh, tourism climbed a lot in Savannah, and a lot of my friends and acquaintances went to Savannah, really because of the book. And I am delighted to say that not one single person has been disappointed by what they found in Savannah. Savannah does not disappoint. No matter what's happened to it since the book, it's prospered and more people go there. Savannah has remained Savannah, thank God. On behalf of the entire cast of Old Town Trolley Tours, I'd like to welcome you to Savannah, where the hospitality is always warm and the tea is always sweet. Old Town Trolley Tours is part of Historic Tours of America, the largest privately held heritage tour company in the United States. We are innovators in our industry, providing transportainment, our unique combination of transportation and entertainment in major heritage tourism markets throughout the country. We're the original on-off tour in Savannah, and more than half the people who choose to take a trolley tour here choose Old Town Trolley. We were voted the best tour in Savannah and are the only tour company to be endorsed by the historic Savannah Foundation. As these tours are very popular, be sure to secure your reservation right away by seeing one of our sales representatives at any of our depots or by calling 912-233-0083 and speaking to one of our reservationists. Or you can check us out online at www.trolleytours.com. Some of the top travel and lifestyle publications around the country have picked Savannah as one of their top 10 visitor destinations to visit in the United States. Some examples include Condé Nast Traveler Magazine, Travel and Leisure Magazine, Southern Living, and TripAdvisor. All have named Savannah one of the best cities in America to visit. We're glad you're here and we welcome you. Well, the movie came about after the book was such a tremendous success and being uh, on the bestseller list that broke all records for fiction and non-fiction books. And Warner Brothers decided to do the movie with Clint Eastwood directing it, and they came to Savannah. During the shooting, uh, Mr. Eastwood told me that he would like for me to play the role of, of the judge, which I thought was a joke to start with, but he was serious. Our uh, friendship with, with uh, Jim Williams went back to when we bought Armstrong House from him. Uh, to use as a law office. And we had a very pleasant relationship with Mr. Williams. Uh, he lived in Mercer House, but uh, he had done a lot of work in Armstrong House and had used it for uh, showing his uh, European antiques. I had previously 
been in Gingerbread Man, which was written by John Gresham, not as a book. He wrote it for a television series, and Hollywood bought it up and had it directed uh, here in Savannah by Robert Altman. I played the senior partner in the law firm. I was asked by Robert Redford to play uh, a role in The Legend of Bag of Vance, which was also shot in Savannah. I played the role of, uh, of a boarder in the boarding house scene. It took about two days to shoot that one scene. Um, Clint Eastwood would have shot it in about an hour. Our styles evolved. We like to mix the modern with the traditional. Twenty-four E is style, a benchmark, tradition, modern, new, respectful, humble, confident, cool. I'm Rule Joyner, and welcome to Twenty-four E. Forsyth Fountain is the traditional iconic image of Savannah. The fountain was purchased in 1858 by city fathers for $2,200. It weighs 10 tons. It was originally painted uh, sienna marble, dark orange and blues and purples. Uh, and it was not until 1935 that city fathers uh, decided to paint it white so it will gleam in this wonderful sunlight that we have here in Savannah. There is a wonderful classical lady up top with four tritons, half serpents, half men, and four swans spouting uh, wonderful sprays of water into the Savannah air. You know, Savannah's considered the most haunted city in America and uh, people always want to know why. Why do you have so many ghosts living in Savannah? Well. Savannah's literally built on its dead. It's not the kind of thing that a lot of businesses and hotels want to put in their brochures, but uh, we've had cemeteries that have been built over as time progressed. You know, you put the cemetery on the edge of town, but as more Savannah comes along, uh, we're not going around prime real estate. We're going over the top of it. Now, when I point out to people where the cemetery used to be, I always say, now, I'm not going to say all the people didn't get moved. But then again, I'm not saying they did. But being the most haunted city in America just might have something to do with all the unrest of the dead staring up at crosswalks and who knows what else built over the top of them. Wasabi's Fusion Downtown offers authentic Japanese sushi, sashimi, tempura, and teriyaki. Feast on daily specials including Navy Submarine, Volcano, mixed fish with sweet chili sauce, and Happy Hour Sushi Boat for Two at Wasabi's on Martin Luther King Boulevard, open seven days a week from 11 to 11. The best way to experience historic downtown Savannah is to park your car and forget about it. And to make getting around even easier, we provide fare-free transportation. Dock connects you to our parking garages, visitor centers, accommodations, and attractions. There are three elements to the system. The Savannah Bells Ferry, Dotty the Streetcar, and the Express Shuttles. Information is available at each dot stop or at connectonthedot.com. Look for this brochure. It's got information about parking options, the system, and it's got a great map. Thanks for visiting Savannah. You know, my mom always told me not to talk to strangers. Well, there ain't hardly any strangers here in Savannah. You can walk around town all day long and meet real nice people. On the old Savannah tours on and off tour, they're nice tour guides for letting you get on their trolley all day long. <laughs> I like the Telfair Museum, the Ships of the Sea Museum, the Civil Rights Museum, and my bench is in the Savannah History Museum. Okay, sir, please step away from the bench. That's all I have to say about that. River Street is one of the city's most popular destinations for visitors and locals. Tens of thousands of people walk these cobblestones every year to enjoy the sights and sounds of this exciting and historic area. 
I waved at ships day and night for over 40 years, and now I greet the many visitors who choose Old Savannah Tours, the oldest tour company of this wonderful city, voted best tour company since 2003. Join us aboard the trolley tour of historic haunts and explore one of America's most deliciously haunted cities. These fine haunted sites are also on the daytime tour route, if in your chicken. There are many ways to see Savannah, but if you really want to experience it, then come aboard! Old Savannah Tour. Savannah's their middle name. <laughs> one of the best things about Savannah is it's one of the most easily accessible by foot cities in the country. It was originally designed by James Edward Oglethorpe, and it is pretty much true to that same design today. Savannah was founded in 1733 by the great English philanthropist James Edward Oglethorpe. Early Savannah was unique in four or five prohibitions. No rum, no lawyers, no blacks, no land ownership over 500 acres, and no Catholics. Savannah for most of the 18th century was economically depressed and it was not until the 1790s that Eli Whitney came to Savannah to Mulberry Grove, learned all about cotton, and overnight he invented his cotton engine, or cotton gin for short. And the cotton kingdom spread from the Atlantic seaboard all the way to Texas. Now, the cotton made Savannah, Savannah. Great fortunes were made by the great cotton factors, and for the first time we get fabulous architecture in Savannah. In 1886, the Savannah Cotton Exchange was built over the foot of Drayton Street. It was the first building in Savannah built over air rights. Cotton was stored in the great warehouses beside the exchange on River Street, where it was loaded aboard the sailing ships that carried it all over the world. Today, these warehouses have been converted into restaurants, bars, and boutiques. It is one of the many attractions visitors love about Savannah. My wife Ginger and I bought this house on Monterey Square in 1976. We have a 13 marble step commute to our business, V&J Duncan, antique maps, prints, and books. I'm Ginger Duncan, and this is V&J Duncan, antique maps, prints, and books. In the shop, you'll find gorgeous old botanicals, animals, and bird prints. There are maps and views of every state and most countries. There are college prints, old books, and lovely leather-bound volumes, and even new Savannah books, including Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, signed by the author. If you're looking for a gift, remember, the past makes a great present. I'm Captain Derek. I own the Dolphin Magic Tour. It's a tour boat that leaves from River Street. Is Coast Guard certified and inspected for 48 passengers. We take tours from River Street and go towards Tybee looking for dolphin. Most people say it's the highlight of their trip to Savannah. Not to be missed. We are the only boat that can get the dolphin surfing and jumping. Our boat speed can create waves that the dolphin love to surf. The dolphin are the original surfers and know how to put on a good time and a good show. We're at Chippewa Square on historic Bull Street. The brilliant part of the Savannah plan was that when Oglethorpe laid out the town in 1733, he only did four wards containing four squares. But the brilliant, really brilliant part about the plan was to surround the town with a town common that allowed the town to expand into 24 wards containing 24 squares. The statue of Oglethorpe faces south because the enemy of the day were the Spaniards down in St. Augustine. He's got his sword drawn, ready to do battle. This square was made famous by the movie Forrest Gump, starring Tom Hanks. The bench has since been removed. Now, I'm not Forrest Gump, but that's how Forrest Gump was sitting on the bench over there uh, in front of Chippewa Square now. There's an interesting story about that. Hollywood come to town one day and decided they were going to put a bus stop where one had never been before. 
And if you go and look at the wall on the north side of Chippewa Square, you will see a sign that says Chippewa Square and a bed of flowers. That's where the Forrest Gump bench was. Now there's never been a bench there and traffic didn't run the direction around that square that it did in the movie. However, after three days of filming, Hollywood leaves and here comes the world. Ooh, Forrest Gump, where's the bench? Where's the bench? Want to see the bench? Want to sit on the bench? Get my picture taken on the bench. We don't have one. We've never had one. We contact Paramount Pictures. They sent us a bench. If you go over to the Savannah History Museum, however, you will see a fiberglass bench and they'll tell you it's one of them used in a film in a Forrest Gump. But now I got a little backstory for you. A buddy of mine, off-duty police officer, is working the set around Chippewa Square. End of filming. Prop guy knows one less thing he's got to drag back to LA, the better his life is. He looks around at all the police and says, anybody want it? My buddy says, yeah, it'll look good by the pond. Throws it in the back of his pickup truck and off to Richmond Hill, Georgia, he goes with it. Now, I can't speak for any of the other benches that were used during that movie, but I can tell you for certain, the last one on the last day of filming, is at his house to this day, sitting by the pond. Savannah is rich in Civil War history. We're at Fort Pulaski at the mouth of the Savannah River, just 15 minutes from downtown Savannah. Robert E. Lee's first assignment after his graduation from West Point in 1829 was to Cockspur Island. It was he that arranged the ditches and dikes and sighted this fort that was built from 1829 to 1847. Fort Pulaski is a five-sided brick fort, seven feet wide at its base. It's floating on thousands of pilings like an iceberg. It was constructed from 1829 to 1847. In January of 1861, Georgia State Militia, with over 100 soldiers, marched on Fort Pulaski and took the fort from two federal employees. It was a Confederate fort until April of 1862. The Federals under Quincy Adams Gilmore erected 11 batteries on Tybee Island. They had rifled cannon. It was the first use of rifle cannon in the history of warfare. It was to revolutionize all future warfare and brick forts were no longer valid. And on April the 10th, 1862, he began a 30-hour bombardment of Fort Pulaski. When the outer wall was breached and the cannonballs began hitting near the magazine, the Confederates decided to surrender. Colonel Charles H. Olmsted surrenders the fort, announcing to the federal authorities, I yield my sword, I trust I have not disgraced it. We're at the Sherman headquarters uh, in Savannah. At the end of the Civil War, General Sherman chose this house to be his headquarters. The house was built in 1853 by Charles Green, an English cotton factor, and it cost an astonishing $90,000. It is one of the few houses in the neo-Gothic style. Now, the house since 1942 has been the parish house for St. John's Episcopal Church, which is, uh, located on the adjoining trust lot. Now the most famous telegram ever sent out of the city of Savannah came from this house to President Abraham Lincoln. I beg to present to you as a Christmas present, the city of Savannah with 25,000 bales of cotton. Indeed, Harper's Weekly showed a wonderful engraving of General Sherman enjoying Christmas dinner in the dining room. He also held a New Year's Day reception for Savannians who cared to visit him. The house is a house museum and is open to the public, docented by members of the congregation. Experience Parker's Market, Historic Savannah's 24-hour gourmet grocery store located at 222 Drayton Street. Recognized for outstanding historic renovation, Parker's Market is an example of preserving our past through adaptive reuse. The Mediterranean-style building is almost 100 years old. Like a European grocery, Parker's Market surprises with its quirkiness, variety, and charm. Who would expect a gas station to be rated best gourmet food three years running? Find homemade breads, desserts, and meals to go around the clock. Fresh flowers, fine wine, and imported cheese. Specialty coffees, trendy gifts, and drugstore staples available when you need them. Stop by Parker's Market Urban Gourmet for a taste of upscale contemporary living, a true Savannah experience.
We left the dock about daylight, maybe a little before daylight, and uh, we go to certain areas that we, you know, used to going to over the years, and we've got a small net that we pull every 10 minutes, and that tells us what we're doing in the big nets. Now, I'm my own boss. Uh, I enjoy it. I'm outside, and it's just a lot of things that, that uh, make you love the business. Oh, well, I, I enjoy shrimp any way you can cook them, uh, fried, boiled, <laughs> yeah, any, any way, uh, rolled in bacon, baked in the oven. They're good any way you cook them. I've been in the shrimp business all my life. It's uh, third generation to run the shrimp dock here. My uh, grandfather bought this dock probably six or seven years ago. I've been working it down here all my life since I was old enough to work. These are fresh Georgia shrimp, the best shrimp in the world. But there's no comparison between salt water, you know, wild caught Georgia shrimp or South Carolina shrimp and the uh, freshwater pond raised shrimp you get it, you know, frozen come in from the foreign countries. Shrimp with the head on is um, when you head them, take the heads off, you yields about 60% uh, to the head is actually 40% of the shrimp. Tybee Island lies at the mouth of the Savannah River. The word Tybee is an Indian word for salt, for here the Indians came for their yearly supply of salt from the salt flats. It's also the location of the historic Tybee Island Lighthouse. The first Tybee Lighthouse was one of the first public structures in Georgia. The current lighthouse was built in 1773, but it was partially destroyed by the Irish Jasper Greens during the Civil War. But after the war, it was repaired, and today is one of the famous lighthouses on the eastern seaboard. And if you have the energy, you can climb all the way to the top. Directly across the street is the Tybee Island Museum, displaying artifacts from Indian times to the present. Well, uh, Aga is the University of Georgia mascot that we have provided since 1956. We are now on Aga 6, and um, he is a live white English bulldog, and all his predecessors were. Uh, Sports Illustrated named Aga 5 the most uh, outstanding college mascot in the country. They've all served the same purpose and that is to present the kind of mascot that the University of Georgia feels um, best portrays the spirit of their athletic teams. There are many ways to see Savannah, but if you really want to experience it, then come right. aboard! On the old Savannah tours on and off tour, they're nice tour guides for letting you get on their trolley all day long. <laughs> Old Savannah Tours boasts of a comprehensive three-hour tour. The Savannah Experience! All from the comfort of a climate-controlled minibus. Old Savannah Tours is perfect for those who appreciate fine architecture, for purveyors of fine art, and history buffs as well. Find out why Old Savannah Tours is the most popular tour company in Savannah. Our tours are not canned or scripted. We're the largest tour company. And the oldest, too. Savannah's their middle name. The 1950s and the 1960s were destructive to most American cities, and Savannah was no exception. In 1954, Savannians held a macabre Halloween ball right before the old city market was torn down. But today, city market area is lively, hot attractions at night, and any time during the day you can see artists working on the first and second floors. City Market, the art and soul of Savannah. 
Hi, I'm Chuck Hamilton. This is the AT Hunt Art Gallery. We have about 30 crazy artists that love to meet people and be complimented in person. We are pet and food friendly, so, so please come on in and experience the AT Hunt Art Gallery. One of the most exciting things to see is the upstairs artists creating their masterpieces. And for those with tired feet, there's even an elevator. There are photographers, sculptures, stained glass works, wood crafting, artist painting in oil, watercolor, and acrylic. I came to the United States during the Tulsa races in 1976, and by invitation of our mayor of the city of Savannah, I came to Savannah and uh, fell in love with the South. Eventually sold my boat and I pursued my job as an artist. I'm an affectionado of jazz. Uh, Ray Charles uh, came to Savannah. I was intrigued to be close to the stage and sketch him and paint him. I have done several uh, versions every time. It is different, but yet it is always the happy, soulful Ray Charles. Savannah and its jazz, that is my color. Original art and limited edition prints for the discriminating collector are available in my studio. Please visit me at City Market upstairs. I've been a full-time artist since 1972. I've uh, spent my life on the water, enjoying all the uh, natural history of it, the birds, the animals, the fish, uh, the boats, the beautiful homes, and uh, I specialize in painting all those on charts. I think it's a man thing maybe that, you know, that we all like uh, charts and maps. It's, it gives us a sense of place and that adds another dimension to the artwork that I do. I specialize in Chesapeake Bay Area, but I can do uh, any image you want on any chart anywhere in the world. Depending on how custom you'd like your map or chart, visit me at my website, www.themapguide.com, or call me at 413-527-8557, and we can discuss the project. Welcome to Belfast Savannah Seafood and Steaks, located in the heart of the city market. Our restaurant offers casual fine dining in a historic brick building dated back to 1902. Enjoy lunch, dinner, or champagne brunch on Sunday in the former location of the Belfast family-owned wholesale food supplier. Choose from a tender Angus steak, our award-winning crab cakes, or the best seafood in Savannah. Belfast will not disappoint you. Guests may dine on our outdoor patio or in the dining room. Be sure to visit us while in Savannah. Our staff will be delighted to serve you. Welcome to Cafe Gelato. Come and experience our authentic homemade Italian ice cream, toasted paninis, and gourmet coffee in Ellis Square. Savannah has been called a place of live oaks and dead people. And we find ourselves here in Colonial Cemetery that was used by Savannians from 1750 until 1853. Now, what we have here are large vaults, and it in fact reminds us of New Orleans, where in fact you are required to be buried above ground. But what we have here are vaults with large rooms underneath these tombs, large enough to hold generations of Savannah families. And a number of important people are buried here in Colonial Cemetery, and one is um, Richard Henry Wiles, brother, James Wiles, who died in a duel in 1815. Another of Savannah's famous cemeteries is Bonaventure Cemetery on the banks of the Wilmington River. Now originally the property was the home of the Tatnell family, but Christmas time 1800 the big house caught fire during a dinner party. The colonel simply ordered the table out onto the lawn and legend has it that the dinner guests finished their meals watching the house burn to the ground. Now, a couple of important grave sites out at Bonaventure. In fact, at the very entrance to Bonaventure is the William Gaston tomb. Now, William Gaston was a bachelor banker here in Savannah, and he loved to entertain in life. And when he died, his tomb was a receiving vault, so that when visitors uh, came to Savannah and died, they visited with Mr. Gaston until arrangements could be made with their respective families. Another famous grave at Bonaventure is that of Johnny Mercer, Savannah's most famous lyricist. Johnny wrote a thousand songs, he wrote for 90 movies, uh, and was the first of only three men that won four Oscars. 
The most famous, I guess, of his uh, songs is Moon River, which he won in 1961. Johnny died of a brain hemorrhage in 1976, and he asked to be buried in his beloved Savannah. Now, as you can see, Bonaventure is enclosed with a fence. People just die to get in. Indeed, Savannians believe to be buried in Bonaventure is almost as good as being alive anywhere else. If shopping is what you're looking for, then look no further than beautiful Broughton Street located in historic downtown Savannah, Georgia. This is the area here where ladies came with their white gloves and high heels. Yeah, the white gloves are no more, but the high heels are still around. We'd love to see you down here today. Remember, shop downtown. At Goldfish Clothing and Jewelry, we work with artisans to bring you handmade products from around the world. Fairly traded products at affordable prices and great service. Come meet the team at Go Fish next to Savannah Bee. Come on and visit us at the Savannah Bee Company with a retail experience built on education into the fascinating world of the honeybee. Slide up to our bar for a honey tasting, honey latte, or treat your body by sampling our natural beeswax skincare products. And while the kids read, draw, and learn in our interactive bee skip, take your honey refreshments to the Honey Bee Theater and watch one of the films about the wonders of the honey bee. Savannah Bee Company at 104 West Broughton Street and under the Hyatt on River Street. Take an authentic piece of Savannah home with you. Growing up in Savannah, Georgia, we're surrounded by all this beautiful architecture and the history of this wonderful city. What really excites me is being able to respect that and creating spaces with these modern pieces. And when you put those two elements together, there's nothing cooler. In fact, it's timeless. This is First African Baptist Church, the oldest black church in North America. The building built by slaves. The gentleman that laid the first brick laid the last. The balcony hold pews that actually were built by slaves. They have the oldest information in this building. That information is written in cursive Hebrew writing. Downstairs, the air holes that the people, when they hid beneath the floors, they were able to use are actually African prayer symbols. This building was built during the night hours. It was also not only used as a place of worship, but it was used as a place to help out on the Underground Railroad. One of the greatest missions I believe ever taken out and carried through was handled beneath the floors of First African Baptist Church. There are many items in here that now stands as proof of the Underground Railroad. In the ceiling of the church is the cold that this building is used as a safe place, and that code is Nine Patch. Nine Patch is a quilt symbol that was used during the Underground Railroad to identify safe places. So that Nine Patch was placed right in the, in the ceiling of the First African Baptist Church in plain view. If you're interested in getting a tour of this church, you're welcome to come to First African Baptist on Franklin Square, or you can call 233-6597, and you will be welcome to have a tour. You're watching the Savannah Hotel Channel, part of the Visitors TV Network. For more information on anything you've seen on this program, visit our website, visitorstvnetwork.com, where you can view all of the video for this city as well as all of the other cities in our network and link directly to the attraction's website and get more information such as the restaurant menus, the local weather forecast, calendar of events, and directions from your hotel. All this and more at visitorstvnetwork.com. Welcome to Southern Charm Antiques. Experience the elegance that once graced the Old South with fine porcelains, crystal, silver, furniture, chandeliers, and much more. At the corner of Bull and Liberty Streets, where the past meets the present and moves into the future. Now, if you've all been down to River Street and you've taken a walk and it feels like you're gonna stumble and fall every couple of feet, you wonder what you're walking on, people go, well, those are cobblestones. No, those are ballast stones. They came over from different parts of the world that we were trading with. Uh, they came from Portugal and France and England, and when the ships come over here, they dumped them off. Well, 
River Street and the ramps used to be nothing but mud, sand, and dirt. So we started paving with them. As the sailors were coming back, they looked at all the paving we were doing with the stones they were bringing for free and said, well, that's dumb. Why don't we start bringing them something that's equally heavy for us, but that we can sell? So beginning of the 1800s, they quit bringing us rocks and started bringing us scrap iron and pig iron. As you walk around Savannah, a lot of the old decorative cast iron that you see is iron that came over as ballast and ships from all the uh, countries of the world that we used to trade with back at the beginning of the 1800s. Here at River Street Suites under the big red awning on River Street, everyone who walks through our door receives one of these, a fresh warm praline sample. We also have our delicious glazed pecans and old-fashioned peanut brittle, and also try one of our chocolate bear claws. We also make saltwater taffy daily on our 80-year-old taffy machine. We invite you to take one of our brochures so you can order from home, or you can place your order right in the store. We ship UPS daily. You can also order on our website at riverstreetsuites.com. This is Nick, the owner from the Olympia Cafe on River Street. I invite you all to come and have dinner with us. We are open from 11 in the morning to 10 at night. We want you all to come and experience our best seafood and the best food you ever have. Me and my staff, we're going to take very good care of you. Opa! I'm Captain Jonathan Clawton, owner of the River Street Riverboat Company, and I'd like to welcome you to Savannah. Come down and experience a variety of day and evening cruises on board the Savannah River Queen and her sister ship, the Georgia Queen. For entertainment, dining, and gracious southern hospitality, take a leisurely day or evening cruise with us along the historic Savannah River. Enjoy southern dining from old family recipes and wonderful sightseeing along the way. So come on down for fun on the river and celebrate with us. A night in Savannah you won't forget. Call or visit us online and check out our money-saving combo tours. 9 East River Street in the heart of Savannah's downtown. The ultimate Savannah experience.